everyone, and we're live. You're tuning in to The Cosmic Children Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin. And today I have an interesting individual in the studio with me. To kickstart the conversation, could you please introduce yourself? And for those who might not have heard of you before, how would you describe what you do? Um, hello, <laughs> I'm Lewis, also known as Lou Lo. I'm a singer-songwriter, uh, but I think more late, more recently I'm realizing that like writing songs and making music is just the tool in which I, you know, live my life or fulfill my purpose. Um, so yeah, I'm a human. That's I'm what just I like, am. Me too, I'm a human. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I noticed that you didn't say musician. Is there mm. a particular reason? You said singer, songwriter, and you use music as a tool. Mm. But from, from a layman's point of view, I would think of you as a musician. Is, is there a reason why? Uh, no, I think I just chose those words. I think the like foremost the thing that i love most is songwriting mm. and uh i mean songwriting is under the umbrella of music yep. um but i think if someone was to stronghold me and ask me like to either stop writing like melodies and music or stop writing lyrics i would choose to stop writing melodies first why is that i think lyrics are so powerful mm. like i've always described um music as kind of the flavor of the dish but lyric is the texture mm. and like if you put like this beautiful burger in a blender you know the flavors are there but it's just not a burger anymore mm. um and i think texture is so important uh, and that's what i think lyrics are to me yeah gotcha so as attention to that i'm curious to know uh, from your perspective what is music oh yeah. <laughs> oh my we're going deep we're gonna kickstart this conversation yeah. right yeah what is music uh the first thing that comes to mind is music is um oh my i guess it it's if we're talking scientifically mm. music is a bunch of notes a bunch of pitches that have a set space between each other right because yeah. without rhythm then it's just a bunch of pitches floating. Yep. So I guess that's what music is. But I think music is I, what brings people together from okay. just like the dawn of time. I think yeah. music is what brings people together. Even simple things like a birthday celebration, mm -hmm. right? A birthday song. You could be at a party and like not talk to most of the people at the party. But mm -hmm. at the end of the whole thing, when you sing happy birthday together suddenly everyone's on the same page, you know? Yeah. It brings strangers together. I mean, if you're talking in terms of religion, it's used to worship, and that also brings people together. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think music makes people feel less alone. And that's why it's so special, because I think all of us, to some extent, feel alone. Mm. Um, but then we can all be alone together with music, you know? Isn't it a bit paradoxical to be alone together? Yes, but I think you can be with someone and still feel lonely. Definitely. Right? And I think it's understanding that everyone has their own personal journey. Mm. Um, everyone, I mean, for me, I am I, I subscribe to spir spirituality. So cool. I think our souls, right, we all have our own journeys. Mm -hmm. But it's like understanding that, yes, you are suffering. And yes, you have to be on this path and do the work by yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you look around you, everyone is doing it alone together. Mm. And that, I think that makes me feel less um, uh, overwhelmed by mm. how much, how much I have left to grow, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and also like, I mean, lately it's, it's not even lately. It's just the last 10, 15 years. There's so much shit going on in the world. Oh yeah. And sometimes I think it's overwhelming to to take in how much change the world needs in mm -hmm. order for us to get to a more peaceful place. Mm -hmm. And you can feel very lonely in that. I don't know. For me, I feel like I, I have an obligation or responsibility to help contribute to that change in a good way. Mm -hmm. 
especially because you know i feel like i'm i come from a place of privilege and it's like i live a good life therefore i have no reason or no excuse to not try and make this world a better place in the ways that i can uh with the resources that i have access to and sometimes when you think about how much again shit there is in the world Mm -hmm. It can be very isolating because it's like, what can I do on my own, right? I am just me. Mm. But actually, it's like, no, everyone is doing the best they can in their own way. Mm. And with that train of thought, it's like, you're not doing anything alone. Because, yeah, you're like suffering together. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Suffering in, 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 in your own way, I suppose. Because that's the paradox, isn't it? Like, people might look at exterior appearances and people might think, oh, people are doing fine, but Mm. you never really know what one might be going through. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And also, I mean, that's why, going back to music, it's like, that's why music is so powerful, especially if you've written something that is relatable. Mm -hmm. Because someone who has never lived your life or, yeah, someone who you have never lived their life may listen to your song and be like wow it's almost like you know mm. exactly what i'm going through uh, because even though the details of the experience may be very different the outcome or the emotion that is the result of that experience mm-hmm. is something that we can all share right yeah. like the extent of what joy means to you may be very different but mm. we know what joy is we know what sadness is or loss or grief and like maybe to you like um losing your wallet may have the same depth of emotion as me losing my best friend Mm -hmm. and i cannot deny that experience from you it is valid you know what i mean and but it's like why don't we just take away the details and just realize like oh we've both understood loss before Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to what extent because it's all relative, right? Um, yeah, I love music. <laughs> has the definition of music has it changed for you personally over the years as you have uh, begun this journey as a singer, as a songwriter? Mm. Because you 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 gave me a very scientific uh, definition initially, but then right. it went into oh, uh, bringing people together. But I'm mm. just curious to know: has it changed uh, across your journey? I think uh, music used to serve only me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was 17, writing my first song, it was for me because, you know, I went through my first teenage breakup and Mm. I wrote this song. (laughs) I wrote this song and it was like helping me Mm. get through it. Mm. And when I shared it, in many ways, I was also seeking validation, right? You want people to like your songs. You want people to say like, wow, you're such a great writer or Mm. you have so much potential. And then, you know, as the years go by, I think, you know, different events happened and you start to realize like, oh, you know, if I continue only writing music for myself, for me personally, it's not sustainable because it doesn't bring permanent fulfillment. Interesting. To my soul. Mm. There needs to be a, a, for me, there needs to, I need to dig deeper. And I, and I did. And I think now it's like, when I say I write music to bring people together, to connect with people, like, I have that intention now. And it's not just a bonus effect to writing a song, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I wrote this song and if you so happen to connect with it, great. But now it's like, I'm writing the song so that we can connect and I think that shift in perspective has made me enjoy songwriting a lot more. Mm. I mean, I've always loved it. I've I've always loved the craft, but like now it's like, how do I understand the human psyche? How do I understand how people interact with each other and, and then use that knowledge to write songs, you know, picking specific words that Mm. I know will connect with people differently Mm -hmm. Um, because your the tone of voice or the persona that you are writing from also affects the way the message is received, right? Yep. 
you can be an angry, revengeful ex. You know, and in your song, you can be like, fuck all of the things that you did to me. Or you can write it from a more, you know, maybe a more mature perspective, which is, you know, I'm glad that you taught me all these lessons. Mm -hmm. And those two songs are very different and they serve different people, right? Mm -hmm. Someone out there needs the fuck you ex song and someone needs the, okay, I'm ready to accept that it happened and I'm no longer going to hold that hatred so when i'm writing songs now it's like i'm thinking about who is receiving this and i need to write for that person Mm. yeah what has helped you uh shift your perspectives because you mentioned that initially you were one way but right now Mm. you have a more macro look at things was it a mentor of yours was it just uh just going through the the journey yeah i'm curious to know uh and you know I'm just thinking out loud on like how personal and honest do I want to be but like now I feel like it's the best time to do it um honestly it's like a very spiritual decision Mm -hmm. that I made I think like about six seven years ago I finished my NS and for some reason I had a I I just had a draw to like go to yoga school to become a teacher Mm -hmm. And I got certified. And I think in that one month of like intensive meditation every day, intensive yoga asanas and learning the theory of mm. what what each pose does for you, I think it made me think about my life in a much deeper way to realize like there's way more than just my physical body and way more than just my ego and seeking validation and getting approval from my family and Mm. fitting in it's like oh it's actually like this whole time we you know our eyes have been tricking us because we are taught to believe that everything we know is what we can see Mm -hmm. what we can hear Mm -hmm. but there's so much we don't know that is inside of us waiting to be discovered Mm -hmm. but in order for that to happen you have to close your eyes and Mm -hmm. i think that month of meditation kind of triggered or created this domino effect of like okay i've discovered this new thing about myself now this has led me to a new tangent a new segue a new train Mm -hmm. that i can board and be like where is it going to take me next and i think like seven years ago i think my focus was very much on uh how do i love myself more Mm. and then that kind of developed into how do I love other people who are different to me which developed into how again how do I love myself again right you have to it's like the lesson that you have to keep relearning yeah it's cyclical exactly and then from there like I think the past three four months it's 2022 now the past three four months for me I feel like I've been the most self-assured and most confident Mm -hmm. I've ever been because I've just been surrounded by just people who are aware Mm -hmm. and by being around people who are aware you are also almost encouraged to be aware as well Mm -hmm. and it's not just aware of like you know social issues that are happening but like aware of yourself Mm -hmm. so when you are triggered when somebody makes you angry or someone annoys you you have the tools to identify the root of that Mm. issue and then you get to decide what you want to do with it right i can either lash out and and you know be abrasive or i can express myself and communicate myself in a way that maybe is better received Mm -hmm. and every time you successfully you know catalyze or you successfully create a new outcome. Mm -hmm. You're like a bit closer to like being the version of yourself that you aim to be. And that is all again, relative to each person. Right. I think for me, the dream is like to be this person who is so patient and so loving and kind and generous Mm -hmm. and giving someone who is able to empathize with those who 
are maybe right now in a more pessimistic space. Mm. Like my old self would, because by nature, I'm a very optimistic person. But I think my past self would look at someone who's being pessimistic and be like, look at all these silver linings. Mm. Like just stop thinking that way. Maybe view it this way. Now I think I, I, I through my past relationships and the work that I've done, it's like now I can see where the pessimism comes from or I can be a bit more patient and understanding as to why their headspace is there mm-hmm. and realize that like I don't have to pull them out of that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people need to stay in there for a bit longer mm-hmm. so that they learn their lesson, right? Mm-hmm. And vice versa for me, it's like when I'm in a bad mood, letting myself be in the bad mood, right? Because I used to punish myself or think like, oh, this is not a this is not a what a good person mm. would would do, mm-hmm. you know, or if I am considering myself as spiritual, like I need to not be led by my ego. Mm. I need to let it go. Yep. But like sometimes you just need to be pissed yep. and be like, fuck this, fuck that. Yep. Today's a shitty day. And you know what? Tomorrow tomorrow's gonna be a better day. But right now, today in this moment, it sucks. Mm. And to be able to say that, like, I think, again, contributes to how my music has changed and how my frame of mind has changed, um, my perspective has changed. Because, like, I think it was always, like, a very stubborn approach, which is mm-hmm. it has to be perfect or I'm not going to do it at all. Wow. You know, it's like yeah. I'm either going to be the best person I can be or fuck it, I'm just going to be the worst person because yep. there is there was no scale, right? Yeah. But now it's like, oh, healing is not linear, mm-hmm. right? You're going to have days where you're triggered and the wound is reopened. And then you're going to have days where you have amazing progress and you feel great. Um, your Your relationship with your ego is a relationship, which means there are bad days and good mm-hmm. days. There are days where... They're sitting in the passenger seat and you're like, okay, I understand why you want us to go left, <laughs> but we're going to go right. Okay. And then some days the ego's in the front seat yeah. and you're like, please <laughs> slow down. We're like almost hitting the cars yeah. next to us. Yep. Um, and yeah, I think it's just realizing like, oh, everything's a scale and there's no rush mm. to be perfect. As long as you're, for me, as long as I'm working on bettering myself and improving myself every day and as long as I have that intention then I think that gives me a lot more grace yeah have you always had this uh, 100% or bust relationship with perfection <laughs> okay yeah okay. I mean I'm a, I'm a winner you know yeah. I don't like losing what does that mean though, <laughs> today for you what does it mean now yeah to win <sighs> Ooh. Yeah, because that definition of winning has also shifted for me recently. Yeah. Um, oh. I mean, sometimes it's a clear definition of winning, right? Like, I'm a huge gamer. Mm-hmm. Computer games, board games, like, these kind of things, I love winning, mm. right? Because if there's a sense of accomplishment. And then also, neurologically, there is that dopamine yep. rush. You're, yep. You know when you win. Yep. But actually, you can get that dopamine when you lose too. What do you mean by that? And that's something that I've also, I'm also trying to understand. But it's like, when you are so open in the mind, mm-hmm. even when you lose, you can still feel like you won. <laughs> I might be speaking very cryptically right now, but it's kind of like, okay, let's say, you know, you're fighting with your partner. Mm-hmm. And you are trying to convey or trying to convince the other person that you are right. And then you realize at the end, oh, actually you're wrong. And technically you didn't win Mm -hmm. because they were right. Mm -hmm. They were right. But when you acknowledge that you are wrong and let go of this need of winning, you do get a sense of relief because it's like, oh, I didn't have to win for the outcome to come for the outcome to um, be a good outcome. Mm -hmm. 
because now I have a better understanding of the person I'm with. Yep. Now I feel closer and yeah, I didn't have to win in order for that. And that I think also creates a sense of dopamine or a sense of peace. And I think for me, I'm realizing like, okay, I don't have to win as long as at the end of it, I understand myself and I understand the other person better. Mm. Same with if we're talking about gaming. Yep. I don't have to win as long as I learned something from the game. So I might have lost this round. But as long as I acknowledge the mistakes I made, then I still feel like I won. Right? Because you, Even you though still... your teammates are shouting at you? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> for me, oh my God. Like, I used to be such a toxic gamer. Gotcha. But I think I, I also realized like, if I join in on the toxicity, I'm just creating this echo chamber for all the people who are experiencing it so i am now that person who calls out toxicity (laughs) like i will literally join the voice call and be like that was not cool i don't know why you did that or if i hear someone bullying i'd be like hey what's the point of you know shitting on this person they're trying their best and you're trying your best and then in that moment they're like oh my god we're all just trying our best yeah yeah and I'm like, hey, maybe they're just having a bad game. Like, mm-hmm. let let it go. Let's focus on what we can do. And then, you know, try to be friends yep. with that the bully and be yep. like, oh, what do you want to do next? Yep. And then for, to them, they realize like, oh, I'm just projecting my own insecurity. I'm projecting my own need for validation and winning yep. onto someone else. Yep. It's so philosophical because in... In a game setting, you guys need each other to win. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But instead of communicating that, instead of communicating, hey, team member B, I need you to step up so that we can win as a team. Instead of communicating like that, they th- they think that everything's going to shit because of that one person. Mm. But it's a team game, right? Yep. If you're playing a team game, it's a team game. If you hone in and you know, shit on this one person, how can you expect them to do any better, right? Um, Yeah, basically. See, we're not even talking about music because I feel like in the grand scheme of things, music relative to... Yeah, music is just one medium that we get to experience life through, Mm -hmm. right? It could be music or art or even just like, interactions with other people i feel like that's also art right that's just one facet of a million that you get to experience life Mm -hmm. so like for me it's like i love computer games because it allows me to be social with people online i get to do an activity i enjoy Mm -hmm. but you also learn a lot you do from just playing something right only if you're open to it yes so the key word i think the key word guys if you're listening to this (laughs) podcast the key word is just open like i was saying i was talking to somebody the other day about like generate generations and how every generation kind of has a different focus Mm -hmm. you know if you talk about the 1950s and 60s a lot of them were focusing on building the economy and yep. like pragmatism pragmatism yep. survival survival exactly and then you look at the 70s and 80s and where they start talking about social issues mm. things like that but everything comes as a cycle right mm-hmm. i feel like the 2010s even into the 2020 we were going back to focusing on social issues right but like you know when i was talking about this somebody asked like what about somebody who has a different or opposite view to you right like Mm -hmm. for example i'm very much a pro-choice person Mm -hmm. and also i very much believe it's like it's a woman's body so let them decide like if you're male i don't know why you're you know and if we zoom out of the discussion and the debate both people are their arguments is about human life. Mm-hmm. Yes, the details are different, but maybe what can bridge the gap between the opposing parties is reminding themselves that, oh, we're both fighting for similar things. It's human life. 
you know, I'm, it gets frustrating when you look at the details, right? Mm-hmm. Like even things like, I don't know, political parties. It's like you're both fighting for the same thing. Mm-hmm. Your methods are different. And that's why people, you know, feel resistance to either party. But why don't we bond on the fact that we're fighting on for the same things, mm-hmm. right? We just want the world to be a better place. That's it. Yep. The conservatives are fighting to save I mean, to them, they're saving, you know, baby lives. Yeah. And for the more progressive people, they're fighting to save the mother's life yep. and also honoring the mother's choice. Yep. But both, again, they're both trying to just, in their point of view, they're trying yep. to make the world a better place. Yep. And it's like, why don't we focus on that? The fact that even the angry taxi driver who drove you to your Texas destination he's just trying to make a living mm-hmm. so that he can make his own life better and it sucks that you got the brunt of his frustration yep. but you, what, what are you doing you're going to your Texas destination to also try to make your life better right and hopefully we can you know connect a bit more on that and zoom out you were saying like look at the macro like yes looking at the details is important but when you zoom out like zoom out from the room that we're sitting in right now and you look at singapore and you zoom out again you look at asia and Mm -hmm. you zoom out again you look at planet earth and then you zoom out again like (laughs) everything that we think is important is actually not that important it really isn't (laughs) (laughs) but i don't mean that to like you know discount or invalidate people's worries and stresses about life Mm -hmm. because i'm also very much a stressed person we all are but maybe take peace or find peace knowing that if you zoom out just look at how small and meaningless everything is Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in like a negative way, like, yep. oh, it's meaningless, so there's no point to live. It's not nihilism. Yeah, it's yeah. not like, uh, just give up. Yeah. It's meaningless. That's why it should be fun. Yeah. Everything we do should be fun, right? And and that's why if you can like if you can if you can allow yourself to find peace in the small things that you do every day, like like let yourself be there, you mm-hmm. know? If it's, I don't know, drinking, uh, drinking a cup of cold water at night, like let yourself be like, oh, this feels peaceful. I like this. Or sleeping in a bit longer, mm-hmm. or indulging in your favorite food. Yep. Like just let yourself do that because the world's already so hard, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah, a, a friend of mine recently said like we were doing a like a a meditation Mm -hmm. and she was guiding it and she was saying you know the feeling that you feel now is peace like this moment right now is peace call it by its name call it peace and remember that peace is a place that you can visit anytime Mm -hmm. peace is not a destination peace you already have peace inside of you you just have to allow yourself to unlock that door and go into that room whenever you want. Mm -hmm. So even when anxiety or worry is in front of you, you are allowed to actually invite that into that room and be like, come, let's sit with peace. Mm -hmm. Because peace is, I guess peace is the opposite of anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. It's the absence of worry and stress. Yep. And I think even when you are stressed and worried, you can visit peace, even if it's moment momentarily, right? Like be it just one single breath, yep. a deep breath before you go on stage to perform, a deep breath before you come out to your parents. Like that moment of peace is your human right. Like mm. you are, you are allowed to have it because it, it was yours from yep. the from the day you were born yep you've always had it yes. you just have to recognize it yeah and i think a lot of people go through their life thinking like i want to find joy mm, happiness i want to be happy 
I want to find peace, but like you, you're you're using your eyes mm. instead of closing your eyes and realizing like, oh, it's inside of me already. Joy exists inside of me. It's just like, did you watch that Pixar movie Inside Out? Yeah. Joy is inside of us, just like sadness mm. and jealousy and anxiety, worry, anger. Yep. Yep. These things live inside of us. Now it's about acknowledging which ones we've repressed and handcuffed because of the circumstances and the trauma that we've lived through, right? Yep. Like in the movie, we villainized sadness because she was just touching all of the memories and making it all sad. And we yeah. were like, stop. Yeah. And then we realized at the end, it's like, in order for joy to exist, sadness needed to exist. It's just as important. Yeah. Just like how in order for peace to exist, you need worry and anxiety mm -hmm. to keep you alive. Yep. You need anger to help you realize when you are uncomfortable in a situation. Instead of letting people step on you, instead of letting people cross your boundaries. Mm. Anger is there to remind you that this is not okay what you're experiencing this toxic relationship is something that is unhealthy yep. disgust is there to help you know your preferences yep. and things that you are comfortable and uncomfortable with but again as we live through life we have these handcuffs that we're like only joy is the valid emotion everything else needs to be handcuffed yep. everything else needs to not touch the yep. motherboard but no everyone every one of these emotions is important for you to function properly. It's right? the human experience, yeah. It's the human experience. And you don't get to learn if you don't dance with these different emotions, right? Each of these emotions have different dance moves that you will never learn if you don't interact or build a relationship mm -hmm. with them. And like, you know, I'm saying all this, but like, I hate jealousy and envy. Every time I feel it, I feel evil, Mm -hmm. Like I feel dirty because mm. I'm like, I have everything I could possibly need. So why do I feel this way? Why do I feel when I look at my peers and be like, wow, they have more success than me or almost to the extent of like, I deserve that. Mm. Why don't I have that? But it's okay. Like you, the reason why you feel that way is actually because of the lack of, right? You, you want are, something. Yeah. You want something. You are projecting your insecurity that's why you feel jealousy so how about again we zoom out and be like okay i've now acknowledged that i'm projecting my insecurity where's the insecurity from okay let's go down that path the insecurity was because you know i didn't get as many uh followers as i wanted okay let's keep going down that path why do i care about how many followers i have oh it's because I am not, I don't feel validated. I don't feel seen. Okay, why is that? Yep. Then we keep going. And then a lot of it goes back down to our childhood trauma. It is. <laughs> but it's even more than that, it's like not just childhood trauma. It's like, how was our parents treated mm -hmm. in their relationships? Oh, they weren't validated. Mm -hmm. And you realize there's a whole fucking tree to heal. Yep. And that can be overwhelming. Yep. But knowledge is power, right? The moment you acknowledge and see that the all of the things that you hate about yourself are actually things that you can learn to love it's like oh i can let let it go yeah. again let it go <laughs> i can let it go yeah. yeah so that being said there might be reasons why some people choose to not acknowledge it because it is pretty confronting when you realize that all the things that you might ever want or might ever need is with you because it doesn't feel that way mm. at, 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 at a particular point in time. What I've always found to be really strange is we are physical beings. Mm. We are in this 3D space, mm -hmm. but our mind isn't. Mm. Our mind and our brain is two different things and our, our, our brains can always remind us about the past yep. or the alleged past or what yeah. we remember of it yeah. or it can project us into the future which is where worry comes from. Yeah. But our bodies can't, at least not right now. Yeah. We are stuck at this particular point in time and we are stuck feeling uh, how our body translates different emotions, different thoughts yeah. and that is also unique. So I can imagine scenarios as to where people Intrinsic, intrinsically, they might know, okay, there, there might be an issue with this, yeah. but I don't want to face it because yeah. it is a lot easier to get through life not facing this yeah. mountain of 
of of of trauma of problems yeah, yeah. Well, even I'm, though it might lead to salvation yeah. even though yeah well i mean that's where the the phrase ignorance is bliss right like during my own spiritual journey um i mean i'm still on it <laughs> i'm still at the start but like i was also thinking like if i didn't know mm. would i be happier because i see some of my friends especially in ns they live very simple happy lives right they eat the food they like they go to the gym they have their girlfriend and then they do that every day and they're i'm like wow they seem happy yep. maybe if i didn't know all of this my life would also be simpler right mm. because then i wouldn't have to be up at night thinking about what the fuck i'm doing with my life existential questions yeah, yeah. but at the same time like no, I'm so glad I know so much and I'm so glad that I I I'm asking questions because that keeps my mind open, mm. right? And of course it also means that I have to face this suffering in front of me. But I've all, I've almost I'm almost I've almost learnt to love or at least welcome pain. Interesting. Because I know that I'm going to learn something. And that thirst for bettering myself and learning keeps me diving into precarious situations. It's probably what the massacres tells themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, but that's a, a very interesting framework to, to look at life in general because I feel that there is no guaranteed success in life. No nope. guarantees. Nope. But... The one thing I feel that life guarantees you is pain. That is Whoa. almost guaranteed. It, it guarantees you death. It guarantees you pain. Yeah. That is almost a given. It can't guarantee you success. It can't guarantee you quote unquote happiness. Yeah. It can't guarantee you families, whatever. But it can guarantee you death, I think, and pain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've never thought of it that way. Thanks for sharing that. I think that Because pain is guaranteed, what are you going to make of it? Exactly. And I mean, for me, it's like I love waking up and knowing that because of something I learned through my pain and my past suffering, because of that, I am going to interact with the world today a bit differently, hopefully a bit more positively. Mm. And, you know, for example, this... Uh, I have so many cool friends, but another friend and I, we were talking about this idea that like once you've grown to a certain level of consciousness, mm -hmm. like you, you just want to be surrounded by people who are also very conscious. Mm -hmm. Like that makes sense. The yeah. whole idea of like this person no longer serves me or I no longer sit on the same wavelength as mm -hmm. this person and I was talking to her and I was just saying like, in front of me, I have this beautiful garden that I've been slowly tending to. I've been mm -hmm. building it. I've been gathering seeds from different places and my garden is beautiful. I'm mm -hmm. proud of it. Yep. And I think the reason why we want to surround ourselves by other people who have a high level of consciousness or the same level of consciousness is that they also have beautiful gardens, right? And now you're circle jerking each other you're yep. like oh my god that's such a beautiful garden oh my god <laughs> like that's a beautiful flower yep. and i was saying i was asking her like what is so wrong with that mm -hmm. like isn't it nice to just be around people who understand but actually she she helped me understand that it in doing that you're actually serving your ego mm -hmm. right you're feeding your ego yeah and it's very easy to look at someone who doesn't have a beautiful garden and be like, oh, there's so many weeds. Yep. There's so little green. Yep. Where's the water? Your soil is not fertile. What a mess, yep. you know, and be like, I don't want to deal with that. It's really it's judgmental. Yeah. It's very judgmental. And it's very easy to just be like, that's too much work. I don't want to be around it. But if we look at nature, right, every plant 
has so it there's a reason why there's so many seeds mm. it produces so many seeds because the plant knows that not every single one of these seeds is going to bloom mm-hmm. so instead of trying to make the most perfect one seed it, it makes millions yep. and it just goes wherever the wind takes it yep it will just go right and it's like you all of us have these have so many seeds in our pockets why don't you just chuck a few into their garden mm-hmm. and then who knows maybe in a few weeks maybe in a few years the image that i have is like you know we we've grown into this concrete jungle mm-hmm. and you see these little cracks in the concrete where seeds little plants have started to grow yep. it's like when you just throw your seeds at people whose gardens have not yet bloomed mm. in the way that you want it to bloom maybe one of those seeds is going to get through the weeds and be like i've evolved i've transformed yep. and then suddenly there that person's garden is going to be like or that person is going to be like whoa i've never seen this flower before mm. I kind of want my garden to look more like this. Let me investigate further. Let me investigate yeah. further. Let me figure out what makes this plant thrive. Yep. And then from there, their garden starts to look better. But if you live on this very elitist plane of like, I know more. I, yep. I'm i a healthier soul. I'm, yep. I'm better. Yep. Because of my lifestyle choices or whatever. Yeah. Then those seeds will never get there number Mm. one number two you have to remind yourself that your garden used to be dead too somebody kindly and Mm. graciously and generously threw seeds into your garden that's why your garden looks this beautiful is because those seeds didn't get there from nowhere yep someone else did that for you and now you're paying it forward you are interacting with people who may not have a beautiful garden yet Mm. So just throw your damn seeds. There's so many. <laughs> and if the seeds don't bloom, it's okay. Yeah. How much effort is it to just put your hand in your pocket and just go, boop. Yep. Hey, like even if it's a passerby, a stranger on the bus, you know, like the bus driver. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That little moment of gratitude might be that budding seed mm. in their garden. Mm. And they go home and they're like, Wow. This random guy said thank you to me. I'm going to go, hey, thank you, son, for buying the food for our dinner today. Mm. Then that son's going to go to school and be like, hey, guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate that. How far did that seed travel now? Right. And that is now a kind of that that frame of mind that I'm trying to live my life. Obviously, we go through changes, right? Yeah. Maybe it's going to adapt and change. Maybe one day I'll be a very evil person. <laughs> Who knows? I will welcome that. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But in this time right now, I'm trying to unlearn this egotistical way of like, oh, I only want to be around people who understand me. Yeah. It's like, yes, indulge in that. Yep. You know, sometimes you need someone to also... Bounce ideas off. Bounce yeah. ideas off, exactly. And you look at their garden, you're like, oh, how did you, what mm-hmm. watering mm-hmm. technique did you do? And just learning different things. So that when you, again, going back to the garden analogy, when you visit someone else's garden and they're like, hey, I tried to water these, but my hose is not long enough. Mm. Then maybe you can be like, oh, I, bi- I visited a garden where they didn't have a hose. They waited for the rain. Maybe you just have to wait for the rain. Yeah. Oh, you waited for the rain. It didn't work. Mm. Okay, maybe you are overwatering. Just use a mister instead because yep. there's another garden where it bloomed and all they did was mist. Yep. You know, it's like, but you wouldn't have known that exactly. if you didn't talk to other people yep. who have gotten to their level of consciousness through their own path, right? Because for me, I'm very lucky that I got to go to yoga school, mm-hmm. right? I feel like that's a very traditional route of opening your mind because yep. you learn from your guru mm. or your master. Yeah. But it's also a very unique a position to be in. Yeah. Yes. How yeah. many people go to yoga school? You're the first one I've met. <laughs> and, and vice versa, like someone who has gone through years and years of trauma and then suddenly maybe they cross the street and then it makes sense. Yeah. That is something I'll never experience. And the lessons and the things that they know 
I may never know. Yep. And that's why it's so important for us to connect and talk to people because they're going to share with me a perspective that I am probably better off having because then I can be a more empathetic and kinder person if I understand more different perspectives, right? Yeah. So what I find most interesting about human interaction is we can... So when we talk, we're using words, we're yeah. using gestures, we're using analogies. Yeah. But what is most fascinating is that it goes beyond the physical. What I mean by that is like, let's say we have a great conversation today. Who knows how your brain might might perceive it? And it might remind you of this conversation six months down the road. And yeah. like, oh, I get it now. Oh, yeah. something connects. And I yeah. think that is the most fascinating thing. And it ties back to what you mentioned about interaction and talking to other people because you never know uh, what whatever you're saying to the individual or whatever the individual might be saying to you would affect you. Mm-hmm. That is the randomness of, of things that yeah. I don't think an algorithm could really predict it. No. It is so random and so um, inspirational in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just made me think about all the times people have said one or two words to me that have just stuck, mm-hmm. both positive and exactly. negative. Yeah. And they may not even be people that I know now, right? It could be a passing stranger Mm -hmm. or, you know, and that's how powerful language is, Mm -hmm. right? Is that it's so sticky. (laughs) It sticks. It's like chewing gum. Mm -hmm. Even years and years of people stepping on it, it's still there or you can't remove it. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, goes back to the thing, like be kind with the words that you say to people because that might be the last thing that can stick on someone's exactly. surface. Yep. And you would hope that when people remember you, that the last thing you said to them was something nice. You never know. Yeah. You never know. Yep. And again, it's like, I don't think it's, I, I don't know. Is it possible to always be kind? No, I don't think that's a possibility. To, 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 the, the, the sentence of being always being kind. Mm. Um, I don't think we are programmed that way. Mm. Yeah, because we are not perfect. Always mm. being something means there's a sense of perfection there, at least to Ooh, me. Like it, a sense yeah. of permanence or absolute. Yeah, because going back to the idea of, let's say, uh, macro concepts like good and evil, you can't always be good. Yeah. Because that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. You need that evil to, to yeah. kind of contrast the two. That's why so, white lies exist. Yeah. Right? Sometimes... <laughs> You have to tell somebody they look good on their wedding day because it's their wedding day. I've never experienced that before. You know, like, <laughs> but yeah, okay. You're not going to tell someone, by the way, your dress sucks. Yep. yep. I think that is the nuance of, of communication and conversation. Yeah. Actually, in that way, you are being kind. How so? Because you are, even though you're not being honest, mm. you are still putting them first. Yep. To me, I think. I don't know. Let's dig a bit deeper here. Like maybe it is possible to always be kind, but the method in which you do it may not always be perceived as kind. Yeah, that's fair. You know, I so agree to that. Yeah. you can always be doing, always be looking out for the other person. Sometimes you need to, I don't know if you always need to raise your voice. I don't like people raising their voice at me, but <clears throat> sometimes it's, you do need to be harsher with your words mm. so that a message is conveyed. And maybe it takes years for them to realize you were just being kind in that moment. Yep. But that is entirely outside of your control. Yeah. Yeah. And true. I think the idea of always being kind is that you mustn't forget the most important individual to be kind to, which is yourself. Yeah. And I think that could be really difficult because people like to to, to be kind to others. It is easier because it's physical acts, words, uh, you're, you're just projecting out. Yeah. But the idea of being kind to yourself, is, is there like a syllabus to that? Who, who teaches you that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so many of our problems is because we're not kind to ourselves, right? Like you, we've all, we all know that one person who gives everything exactly. to everyone else and they're burnt out, yep. they're exhausted. That's not sustainable. Yep. And then you have somebody who thinks they're being kind to themselves because they love themselves, but they love themselves too much. Mm -hmm. That they stop realizing that 
self-love doesn't mean indulgence, mm-hmm. right? It's not, let me buy everything I want. Let me eat everything I want. It's like on the verge of narcissism, yeah. Narcissism, yeah. right? Because uh, I, I read this book. It was called The, the Narcissist Test. Mm-hmm. It's by Dr. Craig Malkin. And it explores this idea that ego is actually not evil. Ego is not bad. It's the extremes where it becomes unhealthy, mm-hmm. right? You have the narcissist who is on the the 10 scale. Yep. And the opposite of a narcissist is an echoist. Oh, I've never heard of this. So one, someone who loves to be an echo of someone. Just to repeat what the other person is saying. Yeah. And the, the, the word narcissism comes from the Greek mythology, right? Narcissus, yep. who is like this prince, the mm-hmm. most beautiful prince. And one day, you know, he goes into the forest and he looks into the water and he's like, wow, this person yeah. is so beautiful. I want to <laughs> marry this person. Yeah. And Echo yep. was a wood nymph. And she was trying to warn um, Narcissus that if you look lean any further, you're going to fall in and you're going to die. Mm-hmm. Narc- so Echo was became... Uh, a voiceless person mm-hmm. because she has her own story. Yeah. Right? Her own story as to why she got there. Probably one of the goddesses punished her and yeah. took away her voice. Sounds like a Greek story. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and all, the only thing she could do was echo whatever he said. Uh, so he was like, wow, you're so beautiful. And she, all she could say is, you're so beautiful. Yeah. She couldn't say stop. Yep. And in many ways, the absence of your ego also makes you some kind of narcissist. Okay, let me let me try to explain Please that. Explain okay, that, uh... for example, you know, you go into an office and you want to celebrate someone's birthday. Mm-hmm. You bring them this cake, and the whole office is singing them happy birthday. Yep, and they're like going, no, 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 no. Why is it? Why is the center of attention on me? Stop, stop, mm-hmm. everyone, stop. Mm-hmm. By doing that, you are also bringing the attention onto you. In a weird way, you are saying that you don't want the attention. Mm-hmm. You actually do like it. That's why you're doing that. The alternative would be to just let it be. Let it be. And people think like, oh, people who are super humble and people who who don't like the spotlight are healthy people. But you can also you can you can also, you know, be you can also believe that you are special in a narcissistic way yep. by having no ego. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, before we move on, it's like the healthy range is six or seven on the scale. So, so 10 is narcissism. Mm, mm, mm. Six, seven is like where you want to live. Yep. And like, I think if you really love yourself, it means you have a good relationship with your ego. Mm. It means that you know that you are confident in the things that you can do but you are not boastful or not, uh, you don't see someone's value based on how well they can do something. Yep. yep. Right? Or how, how well they serve you. How well they yep. serve you. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the narcissist test. Yeah. But it's interesting because throughout this time, we've just been talking about these concepts and, I would believe they are largely invisible. Yeah. So how how does one even begin this 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 journey? Yeah. Yes, they're invisible, but I think one beautiful thing about the human mind is that we've been able to turn these concepts into physical things like visual art or music or dance. Right? This idea of like the ego can manifest in lyrics. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's why art is so cool, right? Because we are turning invisible things into tangible things. But again, there is no one correct depiction of these concepts, right? Because these concepts are built up of infinite ways Mm. to understand it. Yeah. Having a healthy ego can mean very different things to two different people. Yep. Um, 
just like how someone's idea of a toxic relationship can also be very different. It's so varied and nuanced. It's so there. varied and nuanced. That's why the that's why different songs need to exist, right? Mm. That's why we don't just need one breakup album. We need as many as we can get because everyone's breakup is so different. Yeah. Someone could have just been in a relationship for two weeks, fallen in love, and then ha- got their heart broken. Mm. And someone who's been in a situation shit for 10 years and then just felt fallen in love. Those two albums are so different. Mm. That's why, like, it's not enough. It, it, it's, I mean, I feel like now it's a joke. Like, every time an artist is like, yeah, this is another breakup album. <laughs> but it's like, no, own it. Because yeah. someone out there is waiting and has been waiting for this specific way mm. Or the specific depiction of heartbreak and yep. breakups. That they can relate to. That they can relate to. That's why, again, artists like Lizzo, who is a very, you know, feminist and uh, love yourself kind of artist, her breakup album will be very different to Adele's, mm. who is a, maybe more uh, lamenting and nostalgic. And that's a very different album to Maroon 5. Yeah. You know, and... Even just the gender experience is so different. Yep. Because a man in a man's world is very different to a woman in a man's world. Yep. Right. And a gay artist will have a very different breakup album to someone who is a very staunch Christian yeah, straight agree. couple. Definitely. Their breakup album, their divorce album will be very different. Yeah. And yeah, that's why it's so that's why humans are so cool and interesting. Cause yeah, like, I mean, we barely know each other. I feel like I know you a bit more because of this conversation. <laughs> but, like, more than just your name, like, there's so much that I don't know about you. And there's so much that I will not know about you. And that's what makes you so interesting. Even the people listening now, I may never meet you in person. Mm-hmm. But just remember that you are so interesting because there's so much that other people don't know about you. And what is conventionally interesting, you know, like your skill set is just one thing. You know, you might think that you are a very boring person because you don't play the guitar or you you're not like a national fencer or whatever. But there are some things about you that other people have never, ever done Mm -hmm. before. Even the small ritual you do before you sleep. That's a very interesting thing, right? Like for me personally, I like to shower, brush my teeth, light a candle, and then I put on like spa music. Oh, to go to sleep. Oh, whoa, whoa. I literally have experience. a playlist on my phone and <laughs> yeah. it's just spa music. Because in my head, I was like, I think why I love spas is because you go in and you have the candle, you have the vibes. It makes you, you, you fall the... asleep, yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute, I can just make my bedroom a spa every night by just burning a candle and putting on the music and someone else has a very different ritual maybe it's to close the curtains and to tuck in their chair for their desk make their desk really nice and perfect so that tomorrow morning they wake up they're ready to work again yep that little ritual is so interesting because that is the result of the many years Mm. that got you to that point yeah right? small little changes here and there that no one would ever know yeah exactly and some people open their windows because they want to hear the city they want to hear the cars yeah. and then the opposite someone has soundproofed their room because yeah. they cannot hear anything yeah um that is interesting already and i think people forget like these are things that we should talk about mm-hmm. because these are interesting things to share, you mm-hmm. know, it's instead of maybe instead of asking someone like, how was your day? Like, just oh, ask, what do you do? <laughs> what did you do? Oh, what do you do? What's your job? Like, why don't we ask things like, how do you brush your teeth? Mm-hmm. Because that is also very different, mm-hmm. right? Or how do you like your tofu prepared? If someone's like, oh, I love egg tofu. Oh, I love steamed tofu. Yeah. That's like a, a question that will open up a lot of conversations that you may never thought even to have, have yeah. thought to have yeah. because you think that they're just boring things. Yeah. Do you think the idea that we are all intrinsically interesting without 
even the 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 notion of work or not? Do you think that idea runs in contrast to what society tells us? Yeah, I mean, just biologically, we have so much to be interested about. Yeah. And then as you live your life, as you go through your childhood, into your teenhood, into your adulthood, like... You accumulate stuff. You just accumulate. <laughs> you literally just accumulate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have this backpack, right? And you keep putting things in it. And that's why when we get into adulthood, a lot of us have back pain because we realize that we've been carrying a lot of shit in our bag. Yeah. And then you realize one day you you wake up, you're like, oh my God, I can just put it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not just put it down. I can open the bag and be like, I don't need this anymore. Mm. These books that I had, I can put them away. Oh, did I need this many pencils in my pencil case? No, because I now I need pens. Yeah. And then you can zip the bag and put it on. And you're like, oh my God, it's so much lighter. Right? But I think a lot of people haven't unpacked mm. their backpack yet. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm so tired every day. Yeah. I'm so stressed. Yeah. I'm so bitter. Without realizing that the answer is literally in them, right? They have access to this backpack. Yep. You just haven't realized you've been carrying it the whole time. Yep. It's kind of the same thing as like when you go through the whole day and you finally take off your socks and you're like, oh my God. God, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> these socks are so restricting. Yeah. Or when you take off your pants and you're like, oh my God, these pants yeah. have been so tight. Yeah. Same thing with with this like emotional or symbolic backpack. It's like the moment you realize you can let go of things that don't serve you, serve you or are not relate, re, uh, are not relative to your life. What was the word? Relevant? Relevant, sorry, yeah. They're not relevant to your life. You can put them away, You're, mm. you know, and um, declutter, declutter, make space for new books, mm. make space for new lessons, new people. New experiences. New experiences. And then once that period has gone, make new space, yeah. you know, and, and so on, so on. I think a lot of people hold on to things like, nostalgia is a beautiful feeling but I think a lot of people want to live in nostalgia they're mm. like back in the day or wow when when I used to hang out with my friends all the time and now we barely hang out what changed mm -hmm. it's like yes you know enjoy that nostalgia but when you're ready make space for new memories mm. so that 10 years you will be like thinking about today and being like wow 10 years ago I used to hang out with my friends yeah just make the new memories. Yeah. It sounds as though that there needs to be a certain amount of courage to 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 even be open to new things because as I said, once we've felt something before, we will try to cling onto it. And let's the idea of even putting down the backpack and taking things out, I can imagine a lot of friction, internal friction, because that's where the fears come in. That is where yeah. all your negative thoughts, they will come flooding. Oh, maybe I can't do this. Maybe because I have responsibilities. Yeah. I have people who, who depend on me. But yeah. these are all rel uh, relative to, to how you are. Ultimately, yeah. it is your life, what you want to do with it and how you, you, you choose to live it. Mm. I think fear is a very interesting concept right um fear my sister was the one who who talked to me about this fear is a teacher and sometimes we know this from experience sometimes the best teachers may not have been the kindest teachers mm -hmm. and fear is definitely a very ruthless teacher sometimes right um she needs to exist. Fear needs to exist in order for you to learn and experience just like how pain needs to exist. Pain and fear, they're like sisters, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of the time we villainize them because we're like, why do you exist? Why can you just let, just stop being here? Let me live. Yeah. Let me live. But if we did that, then our human experience would not be Full. Full. Yeah. At all. It would be one-sided. Yeah. It would be very yin. Yep. 
or yang or whatever side you think it is you know but it'll just be very Mm one-sided and if that was the case then all of us would be in heaven (laughs) yeah but (laughs) surprise we're not in heaven that's why we need to go through all of this that's why we need to learn you know if there is a higher being um to those who believe it's like like if I'm being very candid, I'm like, if heaven exists and heaven is supposed to be the best place ever, Mm -hmm. then to me, humans cannot exist there because Mm -hmm. we are faulty, right? We are imperfect. Even if you look at what these religious texts say, we are all, we've all sinned, Mm -hmm. right? So if that is the case, then how the hell, like you think one day you die and then God's like, "Mm, you're good enough, come into heaven. And then he just turns you into this perfect being. Like You would lose yourself. You would lose yourself, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. I really, really wish that it was that linear, but it's not. There's no way it can be that simple. Like you just die and then suddenly you're either perfect or you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think these lessons are important because they help you get a bit closer to not perfection, but just they get you closer to normalcy. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's not you, perfection. Yeah. It's not perfection. It, it gets you, yeah, it gets you closer to freedom or joy or yeah. peace. Peace. It gets you closer to peace, right? And we live our whole lives in fear that I mean, for those who believe in the afterlife, it's like, what if I go to hell? What if I go to heaven? But like, why don't we stop focusing about that and just focus about what we can do right now? Yeah. Which is just learn about ourselves, learn about other people, Mm -hmm. learn how to live with other people in a peaceful way so that if and when we get to nirvana or heaven or whatever you want to call it, we can share with other people and be like, Definitely. how did you experience peace on earth? How yeah. did you connect with people? And then again, we talk about the gardens over there, you know? Yeah. But right now, like stop fearing that you're going to, you're not good enough. Stop fearing that you're not good enough. Stop fearing like, or but stop believing that you're not where you should be. Because mm-hmm. you're, you're where exactly where you should be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even just saying these things out loud, I'm like, am I just talking out of my ass right now? Like, it sounds like a lot of, like you said, concepts and philosophies that like, do I even fully understand what I'm saying? But that's why it's exciting mm-hmm. is that is because I don't understand it fully, yeah. right? You only, I'm only like on chapter one yeah. of like infinite chapters. And so far, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. I'm invested. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to know what chapter 10 will teach me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to know, what has your fears taught you about yourself? Oh, my goodness. Um, I think my fears have taught me that the worst thing that can happen is actually not that bad. Interesting. What do you mean by that? I mean, if we take like, maybe one of my fears is losing my twin sister. She's like, essentially my soulmate, my Mm. best friend. Mm. And if I think about it, I'm like, losing her this lifetime will be very painful, Mm -hmm. right? Pain is inevitable. Death is inevitable. But what is the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing is that I lived a beautiful life connecting with her and getting to know her and going through life with her. And that's already, that's already good enough. Yeah. You know, and that's the worst. If the worst thing is losing her, then it's not that bad because at least I got to do that, you know? Or even like fear of like falling. I have a fear of heights. Okay. I'm like, okay, if I fall, I'll die. Is that really that bad? (laughs) You know what I mean? It's too logical, man. (laughs) Like, like, okay, I'm not, just disclaimer, like I'm not 
saying that I'm okay with dying. With dying. <laughs> yeah. I want to live. Yeah. But if and when the day comes and I have to let go and die, it's not that bad. It's not. You there's know, an acceptance there. There's, there's acceptance, yeah. yeah. Like, I think my human body is afraid of dying. But I think my mind has accepted that death is natural. And when it happens, I will be ready for it. And I'm in, and it's okay. Send me a text when that happens. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my, my fears have taught me that yeah fear the teacher has taught me that the worst thing that to happen is not that bad like i'm going on tour mm. soon um the tour is called the planting seeds tour mm-hmm. and uh i have a fear that is not gonna go to plan mm. right i'm investing a lot of money mm-hmm. <laughs> into this and a lot of time and energy i'm involving a lot of people and i want to make it worth their time yeah and I have this fear that like, what if people don't show up in Korea, yeah. in Philippines? What if people don't buy tickets? What if I don't break even? Yeah. Okay. The Ra- worst, all very rational fears. All yeah. very rational fe- yeah. fears. And I'm like, okay, worst thing that can happen is I lose X amount of money. Yep. I think my projected cost is something like 20K, 22K. Yep. I lose 22K, which is a lot of money for me. Mm-hmm. I have one or two people show up at the shows mm. and I come back with a lot of lessons and a lot of things to share. Yeah. That's not that bad. Were you crying when you realized that? It's like, oh my that's God. not that bad, okay? <laughs> oh my God. No, I, I mean, you know what? Because, I mean, that's that, that's why with this tour, yeah, uh, all the venues we reached out to are less than 100 people mm. because... I've shifted my mindset of instead of trying to reach out to as many people, I just want to reach deeply into people. Mm. And so even if one or two people show up, even if the only people at the venue is us, I will sing it for us then. Mm. I will sing the songs for the people on stage. Yeah. And in that way, I'm still planting seeds. I'm still executing what I wanted to do. And even if in my day-to-day interactions with the locals in Korea, Philippines, I will still be planting seeds. Yeah. It may not be musical seeds, but I'm still planting seeds. And in that way, I am still going to be successful, you yeah. know? So, yeah. And also, what a cool experience. Or what a just what a cool thing to say. Like, I went on tour yeah, with my friends, with my sister. My sister is my assistant tour manager. Like, that's an experience that I'll get to share for the rest of my life. Mm. And I want to hear what whoever's listening, I want to hear about what you are doing. You know, like, I want to hear about your version of a tour, right? Because you have the capacity, you have the resources and the capability of executing your own project. And there are people who are waiting to hear about that project. Mm. And that seed is in you already. You just have to water it a bit, you know? And, you know, the, the all of these things exist within you. You just have to let go. Put down the backpack. Unzip it. Take out some of the books. And, and make and realize your dreams, right? It's very cheesy, but it's like your dreams don't have to be being some famous celebrity or being or making a million dollars. Your dream doesn't have to be this thing. Your dream can be your own version of your dream. Your dream can be repairing your relationship with your mom. Mm. Your dream can be the people in your community uh, planting a tree together or making a garden together, Mm. a physical garden. Like that can be a dream. It doesn't have to be this big thing. Yeah. Like don't look at someone else's dreams and start to believe that those are yours, right? Um, So yeah, going back to this dream thing, like I hope that you, I hope the one thing you take away 
if you only, can only take one thing away from this podcast, this episode, is like maybe take some time to th- rethink and revisit what your dreams are and then believe that y- you have the means to execute it. Of course, be realistic, yeah. right? <laughs> be realistic, yep. you know? If your dream is I want to change the world, like it's that's a bit... It'd be good to define what does that mean. Yeah, define. Yeah, yeah. Define what does that mean. And if you spend enough time doing it, you'll realize that you can't make your dreams come true. Ew. <laughs> I should work for Disney. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I think whoever's listening, you're listening for a reason. Yeah. Like you 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 understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Why is it called the planting seeds tour? Is it a reference back to the garden? The garden was actually a recent conversation I had yeah which I think helps me understand the planting seeds tour better yeah but um I think that this idea that seeds both in the physical realm and in our mind they're just so tenacious and strong Mm -hmm. and I love that they accept that their purpose is not to change someone's life. Their purpose is just to exist. And when the time is right, Mm -hmm. they sprout. Yep. Seeds can go through years without germinating and Mm. sprouting. And when the time is right, then they're like, hello, I'm here. Yep. And I love that they just accept that. A lot of us look outwards and we're like, there's somewhere I need to be. There's yep. people I need to, to meet. There's places I have to go. And it's like, a seed is like, wherever the wind takes me, I'm going to land. And if I land on concrete, it may take a few more years for me to sprout, but that's okay. Yep. And if I land in this beautiful field, I'm going to look at my friends and be like, hi, yep. are you guys ready to flower and make more seeds? Yeah. And then, let the wind take me you know um yeah there's that and number two i think i'm realizing the purpose of my music the the reason why i've spent so many years honing my craft is it's not for validation Mm -hmm. it's not to show people that i can write a good song like those are bonuses and those feed my ego yeah for me it's actually so that I can plant seeds into people's minds, Mm -hmm. seeds of healing, seeds of growth, seeds of letting go. Different flowers have different functions, right? I'm hoping that the songs that I sing will plant different flowers in different people who accept these seeds, right? Mm -hmm. Because someone out there who's going to come to my show is going to go through maybe their first love Mm. and I want to plant that seed of trust so that they can just let themselves fall in love let it go you know you you can be in love and be happy and someone out there is going through loss and I want to plant that seed of grief so that they can really cry let it out feel it sit with it and then when you're ready the seed of healing is going to be there and And then you can nurture that and grow it again. And I'm hoping in that way, I can make my change in the world that I want to see. And I think that it's a more manageable way, right? Like the people that I connect with, I can only connect with the people I I will meet, right? Yep, yep. Like there's no one megaphone which I speak into the mic and suddenly everyone can hear me at once. That's scary. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not that, but whoever's listening, you know, I'm hoping that I can plant these little seeds in you so that you can then grow your garden, gather your own seeds, and then plant those seeds in other people's gardens. People that will never hear my voice. And they have the privilege to hear yours, mm-hmm. right? To hear your stories and your experiences that people want to hear. I, I, I'm excited for those seeds. But if I don't start here, 
then there's a lot of missed ch- missed chains that will never exist. Interesting. So, yeah, planting seeds. I, I don't think. I also think like business wise, if I'm being very very cerebral, it's like I'm visiting these countries for the first time mm. in this context, yep. and maybe in a few years time I'll go back and that community and that following will be bigger. Yeah. So I'm just planting my little seed there. Gotcha. Yeah. It's pretty five hit. Okay. Five hit. <laughs> <laughs> so on a similar tangent, I'm curious to know what has being a musician taught you about yourself? I think um, being a musician or a songwriter has given me a lot of... Okay. I think to have a lot of time uh, to reflect on yourself is to some extent it is privilege, right? Because some people work day to day just trying to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. So being a musician has allowed me to call my work, has allowed me to call self-therapy work because every day I am forced to sit with my emotions and really reflect and think through my interactions with people Mm -hmm. and then make music with it. So, you know, based on our past conversation, all of that growing wouldn't have happened if I didn't do music Mm -hmm. or wouldn't have happened the way it did. It would look different. Yes. Because you can be a businessman and you can also grow a lot. Definitely. As long as you have the right perspective on it, right? Um, So music has taught me everything about myself, right? From the first heartbreak at 17 to my most recent heartbreak or to my most recent songs, it's like every day, every time I sit with my guitar and with my laptop in front of me, pages open, I'm like, what am I going to learn about myself today? Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And sometimes I'm writing a song that sounds exactly the same as a song that I've written, mm-hmm. but it's a nice reminder. And sometimes I'm writing a completely new song and I'm like, oh, I never knew I felt this way about this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's what music has taught me. Does the process of writing music, of writing songs and writing melodies, does it still fascinate you? Oh, yeah. I mean, so one of my jobs is I teach songwriting. Yeah. And, you know, I, what I teach is objective theory. Of right? songwriting. Of songwriting. Like, objectively, this is what I teach is objectively this rhyme is a stronger rhyme than this rhyme Mm. or objectively this melody is a lot more catchier than Mm. this melody but what i find very interesting is that i've been teaching maybe i've been teaching about 15 to 20 students so far yeah because i teach private lessons everyone's song is so different Mm. but my syllabus is the same and yeah, I like. Oh my god, my my, I lost my train of thought. What was the question again? Um, I forgot. <laughs> oh my god, we both forgot. It's fine. But my point is that even though I am teaching the same thing to different people, everyone has interpreted it differently. That's why their songs come out differently, and I love that when I teach songwriting, I hope that I'm also teaching them to reflect using art, using music. Um, Yeah. Oh my God, I can't believe we forgot the question. It happens. (laughs) Is that beautiful to you as a teacher? Because before teaching, I would imagine that the process could be quite lonely unless you're collaborating Mm. with someone. Mm. It's mostly self-reflection. But as you're teaching, you're, you're seeing what your students are learning from you, picking up from you and putting their own spin on it. Mm. Is, is it beautiful to, to see how they are taking your syllabus in and they're reinterpreting it mm. as, as, as they would? Okay, I remember the question. It was, has your love for the craft of songwriting like changed mm. or how has it changed? So going back to this, it's like, 
when I teach new students, because they have different experiences, I'm learning so much about songwriting, about the craft, right? Because this specific, for example, if I write a lyric, this specific string of words that I've created, they will say it differently. Mm -hmm. And when I look at that, I'm like, oh, I've, it's saying, it's sharing similar sentiments, but the effect is different already, right? Just like how, you know, um, going back to like the fuck you X idea, right? Someone, if the concept is showing anger or bitterness towards an X, mm -hmm. someone will say, you know, fuck you for all the things that you did to me. Someone will say, thank you for all the things you did to mm -hmm. me. And someone will say, fuck you, but also thank you mm -hmm. for doing these things to me. It's three different songs, right? It's yeah. three different songs. Yeah. And then in between that, there is a, there's nuances. Yeah. And there are also... For example, the lyric, um, you know, if I if I'm just improvising, like when I look into your eyes, I see all the things that I want to be. Okay, there's that, or there's also when I look into your eyes, I see peace. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. That those two are examples of two different songwriters writing with similar sentiments mm. writing about similar sentiments but the effect is very different already. yeah and there's someone who says when i look into your eyes i know what love is same sentiment same sentiment but the effect is different already yeah. and that's why you know when i listen to my students songs i am observing that because of their lived experiences the way they interpret my assignment is very different. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I, one of my assignments is I ask them to go to the National Art Museum, mm -hmm. National Gallery, yeah. and pick an artwork and write a song about oh, it. Oh, that's interesting. And obviously, even if all 20 students pick the same artwork, the song would be different. Mm -hmm. Because even this, the, the stimuli, stimuli is going to interact the muse is going to interact with you differently. Yep. Um, even just, again, like the male-female perspective or the non-binary perspective is different. Yeah. Your sexuality affects that. The way your parents have brought you up. Are you from a Western society or mm. an Eastern society? Somewhere in between. Somewhere yeah. in between. Maybe you grew up in China, but then you moved to the U UK. Yeah. Yep. Your experience is so different. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's why I love songwriting. I love that's why I love teaching songwriting yeah. because again I, I get the privilege of learning about different people mm. through music yeah right and then they share their songs and I get to ask questions like why did you write this song yep what is this lyric about and I want to hear them defend the lyric mm, you know interesting and if they don't defend the lyric why is it there mm. Are you writing it because it just it's just a rhyme, or are you writing it because there's a reason? And I try to teach my songwriting students to write with intention. Yeah. Even if your intention is to make lots of money mm -hmm. and write a pop song that is that has no meaning, at least that intention is there. Mm -hmm. Right? Or if your song is to say fuck you to your ex, show it to me. Yeah. Make you feel it. Make me feel it. What is the stake that you're putting at the table? Mm. What are you being vulnerable about, right? Because if you have nothing to say, then you might as well not say it. Interesting. Yeah. Are your students um, aspiring musicians or are they just art students? So a lot of them are. Um, I pick my students. So every so often, if I have slots or times, I will do an open call on my social media mm. and different people will apply and then I pick. Yeah. And usually I'm picking students who already play music mm. because I don't want to teach people how to play chords. Yeah. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to teach that side of music. I want to teach people how to connect emotion and use that to create music. Yeah. And so a lot of my students are either aspiring musicians existing musicians mm. or people who want to use songwriting 
to like I have someone who is a therapist who is learning songwriting from me so that they can use that as a tool in their practice. Wow, that is interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, she's going to try to write manifestation songs for her clients. Mm. That is interesting. You know? Yeah. And I love that she reached out and was mm. open enough to be like, this is something that I know nothing about, but maybe this method might help a few people. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to teach you everything I know. Yeah. So that when you work with your clients, you can write them beautiful songs that they know is just for them. Yeah. And that song that they get to sing for themselves, like how powerful is that going to be, you know? That idea is so fringe, yet so human. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. Because I don't imagine it to have like very strong scientific backing, but I feel so... Uh, primitive and like it makes sense right it does make sense it's like (laughs) oh wait it's kind of like teaching a businessman how to dance like i feel like that's going to teach them so much about business Mm -hmm. if they learn how to dance yeah because most negotiations conversations it is a dance yeah yeah or teaching a doctor how to paint Mm -hmm. that might improve their creativity to solve issues Maybe a diagnosis that they don't understand. Yeah. Maybe through painting, they'd be like, oh, I never thought to mix these colors together. Boom, new solution, right? I, th- I just wish people were more open to, or, or, or realize that all of the things that we do are actually very similar. Mm-hmm. We are all experiencing the same thing, but in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. I am curious to know, um, how do you know when a song is done? Uh, I have a very simple answer. Okay. Which is, does it please me? Does it feel good? Yes. Okay. It's done. Okay. (laughs) Like it's for me, if I'm being honest, it's not that deep. It's just, I write the song and then I, if I'm smiling by the end of it, it's done. And that's one bad habit I have, which is I don't like editing my music. Mm. So a lot of good songwriters will write their song sit on it Mm. maybe come back to it edit change words change melodies for me i write the song from start to finish i'm a finisher Mm -hmm. so if the song isn't finished on that day it will never be finished interesting okay because i'll just start a new one yeah goes into the graveyard yep um but yeah i will start and finish it and once it's done i like to just keep it like that Mm. because Maybe in a year's time, if I look at that song and I want to change it, it's no longer honoring the way I felt in that moment, there and then. Of course, if you're talking about polishing, making small changes, maybe this melody, you just change a note. I'm open to that. But Mm -hmm. if you're changing the fundamental of a song or a whole verse, then you're already changing what what you were trying to say. But what, you were, yeah. but what you're trying to say on Monday is very different to Wednesday. Yeah. So if you try to change Monday, then you might as well start a new song. Just mm-hmm. write a new song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's such an interesting way of approaching things because it's it's so... It is as though you're using the, the medium of songs and music to capture an essence of you at a particular point in time and you don't want to touch it because it's already out there. It is ultimately still you and you just leave it and you move on such a fascinating way of working yeah i mean just someone asked me today like all the old songs you have on your spotify that you're not proud of are you going to ever remove them and i just said no because that was me then Mm -hmm. i don't want to erase my history erase who i was Mm -hmm. because who i was got me here yeah right even if like a lot of the old songs I'm not proud of and I don't want to play them but I didn't get here from day one yeah right I wasn't born and suddenly (laughs) I know how to write and put words together I I needed to get do that work yeah and um it's nice to look back and be like wow I've grown so much yeah uh so yeah I think yeah, just like let let yourself exist. 
Because by editing and changing something that was, then you're basically saying that it wasn't good enough. That they were not good enough. Yeah. Which means you're still holding on to this idea that you need to be good enough. No, the song is done. It's enough. Mm -hmm. Move on. Yeah. Write the next song. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Do you use or do you adopt the same um, mentality when you are crafting an album? So when I, (laughs) the people who know me know that I write quite frequently. Mm -hmm. So when I was coming up with this last album that I released last year, yeah. I had like 60 songs to choose from. Is that normal? From what I know, Mm -hmm. a lot of artists will either decide to write an album and then write for the album. Yeah. Or they will, they find a few songs. They're like, okay, I can turn this into album. Mm. And then they write the remaining. Okay. For me, I write because it's like journaling, right? I just write. Yeah. And then when I come up with the album concept, I look through my song bank and I'm like, which songs could create a narrative? Mm -hmm. So I have songs that I've written years ago and then I have songs that I will write today. And then through that, you can see there's still connection, you know? And if... (laughs) Like I joke with my community, I'm like, I have a song graveyard Mm -hmm. and they're just, they're just waiting to be revived. Mm. Um, And that usually happens when it's album time. Cause I, I have a gist of what I want to do. Then I go back and I'm like, Oh, what was this song about? Oh, okay. Yeah. This works or this doesn't work. Um, Yeah. And, and then there are songs that will never be, belong on an album because it is just its own word yeah right it's just its own standalone mm-hmm. piece uh and that may turn into a single or it just may never see the light of day and that's okay yeah. you know um yeah fascinating because i took a listen to a couple of your songs and i was especially drawn to the music videos mm-hmm. i think they're beautiful thank you i think they they really accentuate what the the song might be about. How how was that experience of I guess overseeing the, the, mm. the music video and directing it? Yeah, directing it, the, the aesthetics, how how it fits with the song. Yeah. How was that like? Mm. I think with music videos, uh I always try to honor the director that I've enlisted. Mm. Um I honor their vision and their experience, right? Because for me, the number one thing is when people listen to the song on Spotify or Apple Music, they are interpreting it one way. I want the music video to show them a different perspective, a different take on the song. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the song uh, Galaxy was a song about obsession and and love right it's like when you meet someone for the first time and you're so deep into it you're like when i'm around you like i feel like i'm floating in a galaxy and so for the music video i said like can we create this character who's a stalker like this creep Mm -hmm. and this person who looks at someone and is like they ended up creating this whole world where they were together yep and at the end, you know, the reveal is like this guy is in his house and he's like smelling his clothes. And it's like, oh, this guy is so obsessive about love yeah. that it became unhealthy. Mm-hmm. But what a lot of us don't realize is like a lot of us are that guy. We are so obsessed or we're so invested in our love that we don't see that we're being unhealthy with mm. it. Um, and that's what that was about. And uh, Terminal is a song about long distance relationships not working out Mm -hmm. and acknowledging and knowing from day one that this relationship was terminal. It wasn't going to work out. So for the music video, 
we had twins uh, be cast as the main. And we have this scientist who uh, is trying to clone herself. Mm -hmm. And later we find out she's trying to clone herself because she's sick. And she wants to harvest the organs of her clone. Yeah. But at the end, she realizes like, oh, this clone deserves to live as much as I do. So I'm going to pass on so that this clone gets to live on. And terminal, yeah, like your relationship does not have to be romantic for it to experience that death, right? Mm -hmm. It could be your relationship with your siblings or a friend. Yeah. Knowing like from the moment you meet them, probably not going to be close friends with you. I may not see you in three years, but I'm okay with this now. Yeah. Yeah. So with, 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 with a couple of your songs and even your music videos, you have worked with a lot of collaborators and a lot of other people. How do you balance what you have in mind with what they have in mind and to produce something that you both can be proud of? Oh, just be open, right? What does that mean, though? It goes back to being open, yeah. which means, yes, you have your preferences, but how does their... How does their I help you see better? Right? Because right now, in this moment, like what I see is something that you don't see and what mm-hmm. you see is something I don't see, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, whoever's listening, like I'm, I'm sitting on this table, uh, this wooden table and I'm, I'm, uh, we're just facing each other and you don't see the table tennis tables <laughs> behind you <laughs> and you don't see this green, this, there's this piece of art in, behind him where there's like a bunch of like, they Yetis. look like yetis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I've just been observing them and I realize like you don't see that. And I don't know what's behind me because I haven't been paying attention. So same thing with this music video thing is like, I see things that he doesn't see and he sees things that I don't see. And if I'm closed off to those ideas, then I'm not going to learn and I'm not going to create this thing that is going to reach people efficiently. Right. Um, yeah but also sometimes sometimes you just have preference right yeah like you like this color more than this color and yep. that's okay to express but you invited this other artist to join you because you like their work which means you like their perspective mm-hmm. so if you aren't open to their perspective why are you hiring them yeah <laughs> it's a bit counterproductive in yeah that sense. it's kind yeah. of productive yep. like, exactly then you might as well just get someone to hold the camera yep and direct it, which yep. some people do. They end up directing it themselves, yep. right? Yeah. So in, in, in doing my research for this particular episode, I tune into some of your videos. I have tuned into some of your streams. And what I find most interesting is how how open you are with the creative process, mm. with songwriting, uh songwriting, I think with with your chat, with your stream. I think I think that's fascinating because I think with um only recently with with the rise of streaming and the rise of I think Instagram that the artistic process has become a lot more open mm. with with everyone having tools to, to create artists are becoming, becoming a lot more open about oh how they create things this is how mm. I create mm-hmm. but I think 20 years ago it's it's such a hidden practice like nobody yep. knows how how to write songs people yeah. have to listen to 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 the fucking song on the radio yeah. and then interpret yeah, yeah, it that yeah, way yeah, yeah. so what i find so fascinating is like oh you were like oh the 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 chat would suggest a sentence and then you were okay maybe this will work or maybe that won't work and i think mm. that is so it's 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 like you're conducting a class with, with your chat <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean I, I just want it to be accessible right mm. like going back to privilege it's like i'm lucky enough to go to music school and get a degree in songwriting and get to call my work, call music my work, mm. right? And so when it when I hop on on Mondays, it's always Monday afternoon. It's just 
like I know how dreadful Mondays can be for some people. Mm-hmm. And if I can hold that space for people to come in and be creative and to, you know, push their minds to reflect, like, that's the least I could do, you know? And it's a bonus that I enjoy it. I enjoy doing it. Um, Does it come naturally to you? Because I would imagine streaming and music they are intrinsically two different things. They're mm. two different, I guess, quote unquote, jobs because one is very insular, as we talked about. Mm. But streaming, it's more you have to put on a show. You have to, mm. you have to express. You have to, you have to communicate with with people. Yeah. Oh, I like talking. Okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I love talking. If you haven't, if you haven't noticed, I love talking and I love sharing my opinions. I love mm. sharing perspectives, mm-hmm. and more recently, I love listening to other people. I love hearing their perspective and i think streaming on twitch feels natural to me i mean obviously the the small logistics of like using obs might be a bit tricky at the start but Mm. the nature of talking and interacting with other people is something that i enjoy therefore imparting knowledge or sharing what i know doesn't feel unnatural Mm. yeah it feels because i'm excited i'm excited to share what i know maybe hoping that other people will interact with what i know and share what they know yeah right and challenge my way of thinking challenge me yep so that i can grow right it's always about growing yep um so yeah, I mean, no doubt, like sometimes it's it's tiring, right? Because talking is physically tiring. Mentally draining. Mentally draining. For hours on end. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that with my Twitch community, I can be very candid and just say, guys, I'm tired. Yeah. So either today I'm going to be streaming gaming <laughs> where I don't have to talk. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just focused on the game. Yeah. Or I'm not streaming at all. And, uh... and I'll see y'all another day yeah yeah how would you describe your your chat in like three words uh oh they're so kind and they're so wholesome yeah they look out for each other they listen to each other it's fantastic like i see people coming in expressing um the things that they're going through and i just see people you know sending each other hugs and just being yeah. like sympathetic and empathetic yeah uh i think they're also cheeky (laughs) they love (laughs) they love banter yeah you know they're funny yeah they're funny they're witty um they're generous and they're present Mm -hmm. like a lot of the time the people that are there like they're there you know yeah and i learn a lot from them as well it's like, a, again, it's it's a very, to me, it's a very positive echo chamber. It's like, yeah. if I'm kind, then they're kind. And if yeah. they're kind, I'm kind. And then, you know, then it's, it's just... It's kindness loop. Yeah. yeah, it's kindness loop. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with this echo chamber. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I'm hoping that when they go to other people's chats and other people's communities, yeah, they remember what it feels like to be in mine. Mm. And then they can implement it in that space too. Yeah. And then you continue, you know? But the idea of that is also about cultivating the type of community you have and type of interactions that your community will give to you and to each other. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I really believe, like, if you're an, if you are listening and you're, like, an artist, like, the community you build is entirely up to you. Mm. That's why you go to different people's, different artists' concerts and the audience is so different. Yeah. You know, you go to our, um, if we're talking about local artists, mm-hmm. like you go to Young Raja's audience, a concert, and his audience are hyped and yeah. they're, they're, they're loud and, yep. you know, they're, they're in there. And then yep. you go to Lin Ying's audience and everyone's quiet and they're just listening. Yeah. And there might be overlap, like maybe Lin Ying and Charlie Lim's audience might share. Yep. But again, I feel like Lin Ying has a very delicate and feminine approach 
whereas Charlie is a little bit um, more masculine mm-hmm. uh, and sometimes stoic. And their audience, his audience is going to be different. Um, and I don't know, maybe another artist like, uh, have you heard of Sambal Snake? He's a, no. another rapper, Sambal Snake. Like he's someone who, I feel like he doesn't take it too seriously mm. and he makes his audience very relaxed and yeah. just have fun. Yep. He has a segment where it's just a Zumba class <laughs> and I'm just like, what? And I'm sitting in his audience. I was like, what the fuck is happening? But I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And his community is going to be very different. Yeah. And so like, you know, we take it, let's take it out of the context of an artist, like just as a human, the people around you, how they are, who they are is entirely up to you. Mm. If you want the people around you to gossip and to be invested in other people's lives and what people are doing, you can do that because you, all you have to do is just gossip and yep. do that. You attract the people. Yes. Yeah. And if you want people around you to be supportive and uplifting, you can do that by being supportive and uplifting to other people and the, then the the kindness loop starts, right? Then mm. they're like, wait, but Marissa is being kind to me. So maybe I should be kind back mm. and and doing that. And I've noticed like even in my own life, you know, a, a habit that I started doing maybe two, three years ago is surprise calling my friends and being like, hi. And then them being like, what's wrong? And me going, <laughs> then me going like, oh, I just wanted to say that I love you and that I'm, I'm glad that you're in my life and then them going like huh <laughs> i thought something was wrong and yeah, then now yeah. i get surprise calls from my friends and they're just like hey i just wanted to say i love you and i'm like oh thank you that's really beautiful yeah and just like something like that you know i i, I also acknowledge some of my friends who don't like receiving calls yeah <laughs> so i'll just text them instead uh lin ying is one of them she yeah. does not like me calling yeah Every time I call, she's reluctantly picks up and she's like, oh, what? And then I'm like, hi. <laughs> she's like, can you just text me? And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then I call her the next time again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just like, if you want people to reach out to you, to hang out with you, yep. then you start first. And then one day you'll be surprised. You know, Michael's going to text you first and be like, yo, what are you doing right now? Mm. And you'd be like, oh, I'm doing nothing, you know, but you can't expect that if you don't do it yourself, mm-hmm. if you don't practice what you preach. Yeah. So I do have a very interesting question with regards to streaming. You are a musician and you are a streamer. Do you feel any sort of pressures or responsibilities being in the public eye? Is it tiring for you? Uh, uh... I don't think I feel pressured because everything that I say and do, I believe. Mm. Like, I think it'd be different if I was trying to create a pers- a persona or a character that I wasn't. Mm-hmm. I think that there would be more pressure because it'd be like, oh, can't do that because it's not serving my brand or yep. my reputation. Yep. But for me, I'm like, I'm always trying to be my most authentic self you know sometimes there are barriers to mm-hmm. to that but i try to be the most so that it's not tiring for me yeah so that it's easy so that it's easy for me on and off stage so that when people meet me they're like oh you're the same person mm-hmm. yeah and i also try to do that when i interact with strangers mm-hmm. i try to be myself you know I try to ask them about their day, like how I would ask a friend Mm -hmm. so that, you know, they, yeah, it's just easier for me as well. Right. I don't have to, I don't have to switch off and switch on. Mm -hmm. Um, And every day is an opportunity to be, get better at that too. Cause I think in the past, like even just meeting new people there are so many formalities that you have to follow but now i'm like hey nice to meet you i'm mm. gonna go take a shit be right back yeah and a lot of them will be like 
<laughs> did you just say that in front of me? But also like, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to be honest because sometimes you have to take a shit too. Yeah. And if you need to take a shit, go take a shit because mm. we all, we all, we, we all need a shit sometimes. Yep. yep. Um, or like when I'm with, with my friends and I'm like, Hey guys, I'm tired. I'm going home mm. instead of pretending like I'm enjoying myself out of obligation yeah. or it's my friend's birthday. So yep. I need to stay longer. Mm. It's like, no, I had lots of fun, but I'm so drained and tired from the week. I'll see you soon. And just that makes li- living a lot easier. Yeah, it's so you, an honesty with that. Yeah, yeah, when you just say it, right? Like, I mean, just now, <laughs> y'all who are listening, like I was late <laughs> to the podcast. <laughs> I was one hour late. Yeah. And instead of making up some lie, like something came up, I was just like, no, I... I ended my, I was teaching a student before this. I ended my class late. I'm on the grab now. I'm on the way. And I think hopefully you appreciated the honesty. It's just like, okay, like, thanks for updating me. That's what you said. And like, just be honest about it. You know, if you don't feel, (laughs) I don't know if you should try this, but if you don't feel like going to work, maybe just tell your boss, I don't feel like going to work today. (laughs) See how that goes. <laughs> See how that goes. See how that goes. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe your boss is like, you know what? I appreciate that you're honest. Take the day off. It's true. You never really know what might happen. You never really you, know. You really never really know. Because your yeah. boss is going to be like, what the fuck? But also, you know what? I'm glad you were honest with me because <laughs> you would have come to work with your bad attitude. You might have affected everyone else. And instead you're saying, I don't have the capacity. I'm drained. I need a day. Who knows? Maybe they will be like, okay, just take the day off. Thanks for being Just honest. roll the dice on that and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and and at the very least, he'll say no. He or she will say no. And you were honest. Mm. Nothing to lose. Nothing maybe, to lose. Maybe your job, but nothing maybe to your lose. Job. <laughs> maybe your job. <laughs> maybe your job. But maybe that job wasn't serving you anyway. Mm. That's the bigger question. There you go. Yeah. So to to close off this episode, I just have two mm. uh, questions that I'm really curious about when when I was prepping. So the first question is, um, do you believe in talent? I'm curious about that because for as long as I can remember, anything tied to anything creative, the arts, painting, drawing, film, music, this is idea of talent, mm. like talent is usually not far off in a sentence where people are describing the arts. Mm. Do you believe in it? No. Why not? (laughs) I think the word talent discredits the hours and time that the craftsman has put into their work, right? By calling someone talented or, oh my God, you're so naturally gifted or talented. You're saying that for me, the, the 20 years that I've been singing... All of that it ju- is just discredited, you know? And I understand that the intention is to compliment, but it's a backhanded compliment. You're basically saying that what you do was given to you, mm. landed on your in your lap. I think you can work your way to, to become quote unquote talented in something. But I think right now the definition of talented means that it was innate, like you were born with it. I don't think anyone is born good at anything. Mm. There are inclinations, there are preferences. Some people are better at talking to people. So maybe they are a talented politician because they honed in on that craft with talking to people, rallying people. Um, Maybe you have an innate preference or inclination to visuals you like colors, you like color theory, and that prompted you to start painting. Mm. And then you became a talented painter, but you were not born a painter. Yeah. And yeah, so I don't know, just maybe the next time you meet an artist, you can just be like, wow, you're so hardworking. <laughs> yeah. you I know? do agree, yeah. <laughs> or wow, you're so invested mm. and passionate. I think those things are maybe better qualifiers than talented or gifted naturally gifted yeah yeah what i find most interesting about i guess not just creative work or creative practice is how a honed in an individual can really be so um 
I observe chess, yeah. high high level chess, yeah. and I was just thinking how a how transferable the skills are with let's say high, regards to high level chess and like like the really top players. That is all they are really good at. But let's say if you talk about soccer, they can't play soccer. But the people who are really really good at soccer because they sp- they spend so much time just honing. The, their, their body, their mind just to play soccer. But if you transfer them to an easel to paint, they can't paint. Yeah, I, th- I think that, that concept is so interesting because I do agree that we are born not being good at anything. But it's people who have the inclination and the dedication to just hone mm. in on one specific thing. It's, it's a yeah. little bit like an obsession. And they, yeah. they put in so much effort yeah. that they are so good at it. Okay, on transferable, yes, the actual physical skill may not be transferable but you can transfer the mindset Mm -hmm. right like chess players spend so much time working on strategy and learning how to zoom out learning how to predict learning how to foresee right because when they look at their board they're not thinking about just my next move they're thinking about several moves ahead yeah and that is a transferable skill, right? Just like how in soccer, maybe you're learning about how to be a team player. Because mm-hmm. this ball needs to get into the goal, <laughs> yeah. but I cannot get there by myself. Yeah. So I need to learn how to trust people. Yep. And that right there, trust is something that is transferable. Yep. And you can bring that into art, trusting the process. Just trusting that the paintbrush in your hand and the colors that you have is enough to get you where you need to be. Mm. You know, it's a blank slate. Um, the easel, right? The easel, the, the the canvas is blank. Before the soccer match, the field is blank. Before the chess game begins, everything is blank. That's all the same, right? It's, if you can, if you can zoom out, then you can realize like, Everything that you do, there is a transferable skill. It just may not be the physical one. Yeah. 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 Because the physical reality is, let's say you are playing a chess match, you are playing soccer, mm-hmm. but you have to look at it through a very abstract lens yes. and you have to be able to dissect it. Like yeah. the, the, what, what you're actually doing. What are you actually doing? Yeah. Yes, you're moving pieces on the board, but what is your brain doing? Right. Your Your brain is actually trying to solve puzzles. Yep. And understand patterns. Yes. That is something that mathematicians and scientists do. Yeah. And that is also what artists and musicians do. Musicians study patterns. They study um, the relationship between melodic notes, Mm. which is what you then what you're measuring is the distance between notes and freaking astronauts measure the distance between planets it's mm-hmm. the same thing right it's yeah. just we are just the medium is different but the actual thing that we're doing we're all doing the same thing mm-hmm. right like planting a farmer planting seeds is not dissimilar to a businessman planting a new idea mm-hmm. trying to get investors yep he's yep. also a farmer he's yep. doing the same thing um just like how a mother birthing a child is planting a new seed, a whole freaking human, yeah. <laughs> hoping that maybe this will be a tree that bears fruit. Yeah. Or it could just be a vine. It's just potential. <laughs> it's potential. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that like more people can realize that we are not that different. Your neighbors are not that different. The people across you are not that different. Um, the people who live across the world are not that different. That's why, like, we need to stop fighting with each other. Um, yeah, just to close off, like, my friend wrote a song called Revolution. She's called Katie Buxton. If you mm-hmm. haven't heard the song, go check it out. Uh, for this tour, at every show, I'm going to be playing this song. And one of the line is, lines is, uh, everybody's fighting but don't know what they're fighting for. Um, and then the line is, um, uh, the world's already burning. So why should we feed the flame 
by condemning he who's different, like we're not all the same. It and, sounds like scripture. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when she wrote it, I was like, what the heck? Um, yeah. But like, it really is that simple. We're not that different. We're not different. We're not different. And we're all connected. Everything that you do affects, it could affect somebody across the globe. That small action that you do, that moment where you physically hurt someone could end up physically hurting someone else across the Mm -hmm. globe. You don't know how Mm -hmm. that will manifest, but everything you do is connected, right? And I think Singapore is a perfect Petri dish because we're so small Mm -hmm. that like you date one wrong person and suddenly your cousin's ex-best friend's brother knows about you. (laughs) You know, everything's connected. Yeah. Especially in Singapore. Especially in Singapore. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, just be kind to people because if you be kind to people, you're being kind to yourself. And if you're kind to yourself, you're being kind to other people. Yeah. Strangely enough, that leads me to my last question. So what is love? Ah, <laughs> what is love to you in 2022? Ah, uh, love is the answer to all of my questions. Wow. Every single question that I have mm-hmm. about life, about the things I don't understand. It's so fucking cheesy, but if you build a relationship with love, then you have all the answers you need. Everything that you're scared of, if you have love and if you look for love, then you're no longer scared. If you have love, you have everything. Yeah. Love is, love is the answer to everything. Yeah. And that is a beautiful way to end this episode. Is there anything else you would like to talk about? Um, Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Uh, even though we may be strangers, I hope that you remember that you are still important to me and uh, that what you have to say is valid, what you're going through is valid. Um, I hope that you share your stories and experiences with people around you who are willing to listen because people do want to listen. Uh And yeah, remember that (laughs) love is important. So spread it when you can and uh, receive it when you can. It's a give and take. Yeah. And to close off, where can people find you online uh, about your upcoming tour? Yeah. Uh, So I go by Lulo once again, L-E-W-L-O-H. I'm Lulo on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Twitch, Everything. Everything. Yep. Uh, Lulo. And uh, I'll be posting more dates of the tour soon on my Instagram. I think that's my most active social media platform. And uh, come to one of the shows. I'd love to meet you. Uh, and don't come if you have COVID, though. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you i'm I'm kidding i mean i'm not kidding (laughs) but if you feel good and healthy come to the show yeah all right this has been a beautiful conversation thank you for your time thank you for having me thank you thanks for listening we hope you enjoyed the episode and feel inspired if you enjoyed what you heard thus far do give us a follow on instagram and don't forget to share and subscribe stay tuned for the next episode